Hi everybody, I'm Paul Reed Smith. We're at the PRS factory and we've decided to go into staining today. Paul Miles, uh, the director of private stock, is here. Paul, can you bring a guitar? And so I know that you're not going to tell them how you did this, but this is a color that you guys came up with, right? So yes. why don't you talk about this? <clears throat> this is uh, Northern Lights. It's probably one of the colors that started it all for us that really kind of opened our minds to what we can do with color. Um, believe it or not, this guitar is pink at one point. So when you get this layering of colors, um, you get these kind of surprises that happen that, yeah, that me, you wouldn't necessarily think would come up. Let me hold up. that right up to the camera. <clears throat> cool. Paul, there, I see blues, I see greens, I see purples, I see blacks. There's all kinds of colors coming out of here depending on how you move it, right? Yeah, right. Was that intentional or was that just a happy accident? Well, I think that a lot of our colors particularly on private stocks, end up being happy accidents. Really? Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a formula that we're following when it comes to primary colors, secondary colors, right. tertiary colors. Um, but you're also putting color on wood, and it doesn't act the same as it would on a piece of paper or a painting. Or water in a, in a Or water a in a, you know, beaker. Well, what about the glow colors? What's that all about? A glow is our way of staining burst. So a glow color is generally a, a color that's going to be lighter in the center, yeah. darker on the edges. And what about the dragon's breath? What's that all about? Dragon's breath is the same thing, but if you shifted the glow down, um, it, the dragon's breath idea is that it kind of has a, a dragon's breath, breath yeah. you know. All right, so the sunburst doesn't go all the way around. It's in this Correct. area, right? Correct. It stops here and then is open here. So it just, it's a glow that shifted. I'm seeing a lot of your colors that your team invented on other makers' guitars. How does that make you feel? Um, that we did our job. Oh, well, that's cool. I like that answer. I mean, uh, it just it, it makes us push harder to invent new colors. Yeah, well, it's an unlimited palette, right? It, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. I didn't really understand that until you guys started to do things that I'd never imagined. You know, I, I was always into very pure uh, rainbow colors, whether it be red guitars or blue guitars or the grays or the greens or the purples or the oranges. You know, Carlos has a salmon guitar or he has an orange guitar or whatever. And then well, he, that guitar, his salmon guitar, came yeah. from him sending in a necklace. So he sent, it, sent in a beaded necklace yeah. with a pink core on it. And you guys that, matched that we he wanted it, the color to be that. All right, well, fair enough. And ha that happens a lot that people make requests. They do. They sure do. Is, is that painful or fun? Both. All right, go, go on both sides. Well, I think the painful part is when you're looking at um, a printout from someone's computer, Yeah. which is different from everybody's printout, um, and they're showing you a picture of a sky in Albuquerque, yeah. and you're not there, and it's you know diff different colors on different computers, and they want something in nature to be reproduced on a guitar. Yeah, but 95% of the time they're happy with the stains that you're doing, right? Something like that? I would say 99% of, of the time they are. That's good. 